Hello, Calculus Kids. This is Mr. Bean, and we are in our last lesson for Unit 5. Thank goodness you've made it. And then we're actually done with derivatives after this. Well, not totally done, but we're going to then focus in on the other half of calculus So we'll get, when we get to Unit 6. So today's lesson is focused in on implicit relationships again. So when we do implicit uh, derivatives, implicit differentiation, I should say, uh, and how basically the behavior of the graph works. And then we just apply it to what we know about implicit relationships or implicit equations. So uh, here we go. Well, let me show you what I'm talking about. We're going to take this thing and figure out when is this curve, excuse me, is the curve increasing or decreasing at this point? Well, in order to know if something's increasing or decreasing, so that's the key here, increasing, decreasing, we are trying to talk about its derivative, or in other words, dy dx. Is this thing positive or negative at that point? So the first thing is to take the derivative of this. So the derivative of 3x cubed is 9x squared. And then the derivative of 3 is nothing, so I can leave that is just gone. And now the tricky part of this natural log, including a chain rule and chain rule of implicit differentiation. So we do 1 over this thing, 1 over 4y squared. Now I'm going to multiply by the derivative of the inside, because I just did the natural log. Well, the derivative of the inside is 8y. And then the derivative of y is dy dx, because I'm taking it, the derivative I'm taking with respect to x. That was the key here. I'm derivative with respect to x. That's why the x doesn't have anything, but the y does have an extra little derivative there, dy dx. Okay, so now what we could do, well, let's simplify this just a little bit before we start plugging numbers in. So 9x squared equals the 8 and the 4 will reduce to just 2 over 1. And then the y squared and the y reduced to just one y. That y cancels with one of those. Okay, and then dy dx. So from here, we're just taking the point and plugging, plugging it in. We don't need to actually solve for dy dx yet. Let's just plug in a point, 9 times negative 1 squared. And I always forget how much room I left you. Sorry if I didn't leave enough room here. 2 over y, so 2 over 1 half, 2 divided by a half. Remember, that's the same thing as 2 times the reciprocal. So 2 times 2 is 4. So now we have this thing is a 4. So let's go over here. dy dx equals 9 divided by that 2 divided by half is 4. So we say 4. There we go. dy dx equals 9 4. So now we can say if it's increasing or decreasing. And we're going to say that it is increasing because, because what? Because the derivative is positive. Now, instead of just saying greater than zero, I'm going to show you something. Remember before we would say f prime at an x value of negative one is positive or negative. So that it would specifically talk about this function's derivative at that point x equals negative one. Well, we're doing something similar to that. We're saying that dy dx at the point negative one, one half. And the way I'm going to do that, there's a few ways you can do it, but I really like the way that does a subscript and then a negative one comma one half. That just tells us we're taking the we're looking at the derivative value at this particular point, and that that is greater than zero. So dy dx with a subscript of negative one one half. So at that coordinate point is positive. That's why it is increasing. So there's my answer with a little bit of justification, and there's my work that showed that. Okay, and we get, again we need an x and a y because when it's implicit implicitly related, we have both variables that we have to plug numbers into. Okay, let's do another problem, and that is focusing in on concavity. So with concavity, we need the second derivative. All right, so let's take the first derivative of this. We're going to have a 2x, uh, that's gone, equals e to the y times the derivative of y, which is just dy dx. Now, I do need to solve for dy dx in this one because I need the second derivative. So I'm not plugging in any points yet. So 2x over e to the y. All right, now that I have this, I can take the second derivative. So d squared y over dx squared. That's the notation for second derivative. And I'm going to say that it equals, and now I have to do quotient rule of the first derivative. So the derivative of 2x is just a 2. And then we leave the denominator alone. So I'm going to say e to the y minus, again, I'm doing quotient rule, so now I leave the 2x alone, 2x, and then I times that by the derivative of the denominator, which is e to the y dy dx. 
And then this is all over. Don't forget that last step, this squared, the denominator squared. So e to the y squared. OK, now what? Now we can plug in the point because we have the second derivative. So let's plug in these values, negative 2 and 0. So I'm going to go 2 e to the 0 minus 2 times negative 2 e to the 0. Now what do I do with dy dx? dy dx, we have to use what dy dx equals, which is this, 2x, so 2 times x, all over e to the y. So e to the y, in this case y is a 0. And then I still have all over this thing, so that's e to the 0 quantity squared. Okay, now just a matter of simplifying to figure out if the second derivative is positive or negative. Um, let's see, I'm going to have this e to the 0 is just 1, so it's 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 is plus 4. e to the 0 is 1, so that's gone. Times negative, uh, 2 times negative 2 is, again, negative 4 all over e to the 0, 1, all over e to the 0 is 1, 1 squared is just 1. So we just have the numerator, 2 minus 16, negative 14. So that was our work, and now we put our answer. We are going to say that it is concave down at this point, negative 2, 0. So it's concave down there because now we're talking about the second derivative, so d squared y uh, over dx squared evaluated subscript little point here, negative 2 comma 0, and then that is negative. So there is my answer with its justification. So see, there's nothing new that we're doing here. We're just putting together things that we've already done and putting it all together in one lesson. Last thing, do you have a max, a min, or neither? So this lends itself to checking if you have a max or min. You could do the first derivative test, but that's really hard with a first derivative test when you have to check the left and right side of, a, of values of x when you have both x's and y's. So what you need here with implicit, you need the second derivative test. Because remember, let's say I have a, a function that opens down like this. That is a maximum because of two things we have going on because the first derivative was a critical point, either zero or does not exist, and that the second derivative is, con is zero, or excuse me, is negative. If the second derivative was negative, it's concave down. First derivative being zero causes us to have a maximum. So that's our second derivative test. So let's use that, apply it to this. So the first thing we have to check is, does, is the first derivative a critical point? So let's take dy dx and evaluate it at 0 comma 1. So that's going to equal 2 times 0 all over 3y squared. So 1 squared minus 1. Yes, and that's just going to be a 0 because we have a 0 on top and not a 0 on bottom. So that equals 0. Now that tells me I can keep going on. If the first derivative was not 0 or if the first derivative like basically was a different number. If you had a does not exist situation, you could keep going and check the second derivative. But we know it is a critical point. If it's not a critical point, we would just stop and we would say the answer was neither right there. We would just say, nope, we're done because first derivative is not a critical point. So since it's a critical point, let's keep going. So now we check the second derivative. So d squared y over dx squared evaluated at 0 comma 1. So again, where's the second derivative? It's this long expression here. So I have 2 over 3, 1 squared minus 1. Let's fast forward this so you can just see my answer appear here. And you can see this entire fraction is just going to become a 0 since I have a 0 in the numerator. So the only thing left is 2 over 3 minus 1, which is 2. So 2 over 2, which equals 1. Okay, so now we can give our answer. We have a first derivative of 0 and a second derivative that is positive. So you have this situation. I'll draw it down here. You have the situation in which it is concave up. So that gives us a min at 0, 1 because, and why? Because we have to do these two things. The first derivative evaluated at 0, 1 is equal to 0. So there's the first part and 
we have to also include that the second derivative, because it's the second derivative test that we just used, the second derivative evaluated at 0, 1 is greater than 0. That's why we have a minimum. Whoop. There we go. Okay. So again, nothing new, just kind of using all of the information we've already been doing and putting it together for implicit differentiations, which is kind of nice. And uh, you'll, this packet will be kind of short for you. That's nice. And then we'll be all finished with unit five. So I'll see you back in the next lesson when we get into our unit six stuff with integrals.